Okay, so what I thought I would do now is just to show you a little bit of how I test a stone whenever I am at a stone shop. It's a very quick and fairly straightforward process. What I've got here are three different Kita stones. This one is a Ippomatsu Nashiji from Totoria. This is a western stone. This is a very soft stone. Okay, this will show you a stone that's really not suitable at all for razors. This one is a Kusunoki. It is uh, an eastern stone, but it's from pretty far out from Kyoto. It is uh, a medium soft stone. It can be used for razors, but it requires a lot more skill and effort. And this one is an unidentified Kiita. I got this at a little home shop in Kyoto, not Kyoto, at uh, in Hiroshima. It is very likely a Nakayama stone, but I do not know for sure, so I can't really tell. So here's what I do. Um, first off, you want to wet the stones. Make sure that they don't suck up water too quickly. Um, what that means is, as you can see, I wet them all at the same time, and uh, maybe it's hard to see, but if you look closely at this very soft stone, you can see that the water is already starting to suck into the stone. Okay. This is usually a pretty good indicator of softness. Um, also, even though it's not sort of a 100% correlation, it will tell you that as you hone, this stone will drink a lot of water and uh, you'll need to keep adding water. So that's just a kind of a trouble. Okay. Um, this stone, as you can see, drinking a little bit around the edges, but in the middle it's still very, very thick. So it's not drinking so much. And right here, you'll see something interesting. At this point, it's sucking up a lot of water. Nowhere else is it sucking up a lot of water. Okay, so that means right here you've got a soft spot. The rest of the stone, it's pretty hard. If you wait just a couple of seconds, you can actually see that the stone almost completely dry right here. Okay, it's really sucking up quickly. This stone in the middle, this stone is still pretty wet. Okay, so that what that indicates, as I said before, is that the stone drinks up water quickly. However, like I said, it's not a 100% correlation. You know, some stones will leave the water on top but are still kind of soft. Some stones will drink water but are still kind of hard. Basically it's talking about how porous the stone is. Hardness often correlates to density when we're talking about these Japanese homes. So then after I do that test, all right, I, I, I feel confident if I'm at a home shop, this is a soft stone, this is a so-so soft stone, this is a harder stone. Uh, what I do next is I take this uh, Nagura. This is probably a Koma Nagura, it's unidentified, it's been in use for 40 or so years. Um, as you can see, it's fairly off, fairly white. What happens now is I raise a slurry, and I, I can usually tell by the color of the slurry what kind of hardness we have here. Now, if you take a look at that, very, very quickly I got a slurry, and that slurry is yellow. All from the stone. Absolutely no coma, not going to slurry in that. So, soft stone. Um, not so good for razors. Excellent, excellent stone for knives, however. And I have this stone. Okay, make sure it's nice and wet. Clean off my coma nagora so that there's no slurry left from the other stone. Okay, this is a little slower. So, very little slurry is coming up. What slurry we do have is a mix of white and yellow. So I'm getting some coma slurry in there, but mostly I'm getting some of the stone. So, this is a medium hard stone, okay? You can tell by the colors, right? This is a very deep yellow. This is a little creamier, a little whiter, okay? Nagara is in there. Make 
sure we have nice clean stones when we move forward, okay? Oh, it's already dried out. See? How soft that stuff is. So then, I need to do this last stone. Now this is taking a while. What that means is, this is a hard stone, and it's not so strongly abrasive. And as you see here, that slurry is pure white. No yellow in there. So, it's harder than the Komanagora, which is exactly what we want. Alright, so now what I've done is I've established this zone is a very soft, medium, very hard stone here. At that point, what I want to do is test how the, the stone interacts with blades. Uh, one thing that I should mention here is whenever you're doing this, of course you should always look for inclusions. What I mean by inclusions is uh, bad things in the stone that's other than the stone. Actually, this stone right here actually does have some inclusions. You'll see there's a black spot here, here, and here. That's definitely something you want to watch out for. Um, the The way you tell if how bad that is is, of course, if you're honing and you feel anything right here, whenever you move your razor or knife over that point, any kind of tick or catch, bad, bad sign. You want to stay away from that. I've used this stone several times. I've noticed nothing like that, so it's okay. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. This was a gift. If I had been at a, a hone shop, I probably would not have bought this stone because of those spots, but it turned out okay. So, this stone has what we call ke, that's a hairline crack. Um, cracks can be a bad sign. Uh, as I said, you know, it's something you want to be really careful of. If a crack is has any kind of irregular shaped dark patches around it, that's a sign of, that minerals have accreted around that crack. Uh, that's a toxic inclusion and I would avoid that stone completely. As it is, I have used this stone several times. Uh, it seems to be okay. but. Um, what I do next is I get basically a blade. Any kind of junk blade you want to use is okay. Um, I usually use this uh, Japanese razor I have here. It's not the best Japanese razor, but what it has is this black part. And the black part is a very nice indicator. What happens is, uh, as you hone the razor, you wear away the steel and you hit black. And that black comes out in the slurry and tells you how quickly you are abrading steel. Now, I've got this stone here, a very soft stone. Uh, typically, I would not use this for razors, but here's what I'm going to do. Go like this. Boom, 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 boom. Just a few strokes, and there's no black. Okay, it's just yellow. No black at all. So, uh, not a lot of abrasive power. Now, razor stones don't need that much abrasive power. Uh, it's not a necessity. It is definitely a plus. It's definitely something that, that you will like, because it just means it's a little faster stone. Right now, can you see that black? Nice abrasive power. Very, very handy in this stone. So, um, there's some yellow in there, but there's a lot of black. What that tells you is that it's actually wearing away at the steel. Um, if this was a very heavy slurry, we couldn't trust it so much because that slurry could be building up around this back part and wearing off the, the black before you get it off steel. But as this is not releasing so much slurry, um, we can be confident that the steel is coming off with this blackening. And that's a very good sign of abrasive power. Now, very little black in there. What that tells me is this stone, very hard, but not so much abrasive power. Like I said, that's not a bad thing so much for razors, because razors don't need a lot of abrasive power. You can get over that with, with a little pressure or a little more patience, but it never hurts. Yeah, 
very little abrasive power on that razor, on that stone right there. So, if I were at a home shop and I were testing these, like I said, these black portions might turn me off a little bit. This one is too soft for razors. Um, if I was shopping for uh, plain blades or kitchen knives, excellent stone. Uh, this stone is an all-around very nice stone. I've used it many times. Um, this stone this stone would uh, have a lot of attractive for me. It's very hard, very smooth, it's got a buttery feel. Um, what you want to do then, after you've decided, okay, no go, maybe, mm, definite maybe, is you want to actually look at the edge. And for that, uh, if I'm at a hone shop, then I will use this. Uh, basically, what I'm looking for with this is, after I hone, how even is the change in the edge, right? Um, uh, obviously, you want a before and after. So before you start, you, you take a, a, a nice look at the edge. Uh, make sure you understand where the scratches are, what kind of scratches you've got. Is it very deep and heavy? Is it a light hazing? After you polish your razor, give it a, usually about 20 strokes is enough to give you an idea of how the, the razor changes. If the edge looks like it's degrading a little bit, then you've got to f be careful with that stone. It might have some things in it that uh, affect the edge of the stone negatively, not what you want. Um, so that's how I test a home when I'm at a home shop. I first start with the water, then I do a little bit of slurry, and then I test a blade. So what you do whenever you're testing a stone is, of course, whatever you're comfortable with. Remember that you need to know how hard your stone is, how quickly it absorbs water, and uh, what kind of abrasive power it's got. So, quick and dirty hone test.